What is up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to part two, the final part of the How to Paint a Menoth High Exemplar Krios. This is the Warcaster figure that you get in your War Machine starter kit with the Protector of Menoth and Kador armies. So the colors we're using are Othuan Gray, Ceramite White, Dark Reaper, Rust Gray, Abaddon Black, Seraphim Sabiol, Known Oil, Menoth White Highlight, Troll Slayer Orange, Liquid Gold Rich Gold. Now, this is supposed to be part three. You will notice a distinctive jump at the start of the video because I thought I had uploaded part two, the actual part two, the original part two, and I hadn't, which means that there is a large section that is missing. And uh, so basically I'm going to talk you through what I did. You're going to be using Screamer Pink and Emperor's Children to build up the purple highlights. It's basically just like the uh, Exemplar Cinerators that I did. And for the white highlights, you're going to be painting back up with uh, Menoth White Highlight. You're also going to be putting Dark Reaper and Rust Gray into the folds of the white robe like I had done for the Exemplar Cinerators. And so you're just creating some basic shadows. So now what I'm doing is I am repainting the highlights for those folded sections of the robes, and I'm using Othuan Gray to start. So again, I'm so sorry. I thought I had uploaded part the actual part two, and uh, turns out I hadn't. And when I was clearing space on the computer to make sure that I have enough room for these new files, the minute I pressed empty trash, I I had that sinking feeling like, oh wait, did I upload that video yet? And I looked, and there was no <laughs> there was no video, and I I deleted all of the clips. So and they weren't on my computer card or my camera card because I'm I'm filming more videos. I'm trying to pump out as much videos as I can, so I'm really just clearing the, the memory cards as I get through with them. And uh, I did that at about 3 o'clock in the morning, so I, I attribute it to lack of sleep and too much Metal Gear Solid 5. Okay, so we are um, be, we are starting with the Othuan Grey, and what we're doing is, just like when we painted the Rust Grey and the Dark Reaper into the shadows of the robes for the Cinerators, you can kind of see where I place those shadows. You just really have to thin down your paints so that it creates uh, no hard lines. And you might see right there behind the right foot, there's that nasty looking puddle. You don't want that. <laughs> you want it to dry a little bit more natural looking. So less paint on the brush. And then when you put your Othuan Gray on, you're going to see that it um, blends really, really nicely. It's a transitionary, transitionary step between the Rust Gray and the Ceramite White of the robes. So imagine if, if you had just finished part one, your model's drying, the washes are drying, the robes we hadn't done anything with. So you're going to be painting in the creases and the crevices all of the uh, folded areas with Rust Gray and Dark Reaper. And you can kind of see all of the areas that I did as I'm turning the model around. Now I'm going to just keep talking about what I did in the, the Lost Part 2. While you're painting the dark reaper and the rust gray into the folds of his robes the seraphim sepia wash should be drying and you're going to be highlighting back up the white of the armor with menoth white highlight so it creates this very bone ivory look you can tell i left some of the sepia uh, shade as an undertone underneath and i'm going to be painting up screamer pink on all of the the red uh, rims and edges of the armor and then I'm highlighting with Emperor's Pink I'm building um, highlights and focal points by putting that Emperor's Pink on the sharper edges of the of the armor and not putting it along the whole armor but just really lining specific points while that's drying I'm going back with Ceramite White now onto the robes and I'm building up off of the Othuan Gray highlight. So when you're looking at the model, you want to see at least three, at best, four layers of color, four transitionary steps. And from the darkest, it's Dark Reaper, then Rust Gray, then Othuan Gray, and then uh, uh, Ceramite White. Yeah, four, four layers of color. 
And um, the thing is, your brain will see it and it will think, oh my gosh, that's a great blend. But your, or your eyes will see it rather, but your brain will not be able to tell if you blend it nicely enough. You're just going to see a smooth transition from the bright, crisp, clean white of the Ceramite White all the way down to the bluish gray shadows of the Dark Reaper. And again, I'm going to be putting in the video description the link to my video that has the tutorial soundtrack custom made by Warboss Tay, and you can play that in the background in another tab while you're watching this. It looks like I'm painting all the War Machine figures from the starter set. So I've already done what, what I hadn't done and what I hadn't shown videos on were the, uh, the two Warjacks that come, or three Warjacks actually, that come for the, the Menoth faction in the box set but i did do the exemplar incinerators i did the man of war shock troopers now i'm doing a high exemplar kraos and i'm working on a the uh, commander sorsha scorsha figure for the the kador army and uh, i'm also working on the kador juggernaut and uh, the other one that come in the starter set. Fun models, great models to paint, especially if you have an airbrush. Um, I am mostly doing hand brushing. I'm, I'm not comfortable enough yet to, to uh, teach using an airbrush, especially because the setup is completely different with the camera situation. But um, hopefully one day soon I can get my, my studio set up so that I can show you guys what I'm doing uh, with an airbrush. All right, so here's our model now after the Ceramite White. We're going to be painting Seraphim, Seraphim, Sepio now onto our silver bits. So what I'm doing, I'm going to show you the back of the models. I guess this backpack is steam backpack. What we're just going to do is add a little bit of shading to show some oils and uh, grease in between all of the, all of the silver bits. So we're just lining um, the borders and the edges, and uh, we just don't want a very clean silver. And I don't want to dull it down with Agrax Earthshade or Nuln Oil. I think those are too dark, but Seraphim Sepia is a great oil and greasy grime color. Now we're using Vallejo's Liquid Gold. Fantastic enamel paint. So good. Uh, one of my favorite metallics to use and um, just a beautiful paint. So I'm going to be painting all of the gold areas and adding to the areas that I, I had not painted in gold originally. So I'm going to start with the largest surface area. It's always great for me to work on the largest surface area and then kind of um, decrease the size and, and get smaller so that I'm used to working with the colors as I move down. This is a, a general Warboss Tay tip that I, I like to give. If you're going to start with a new color and one that is so prominent on a figure, then start it off in the uh, using it on the largest areas of the model. Get a feel for how the colors fit on the, the paintbrush, how it feels to control the paintbrush and uh, the brush control you have over the color, and then work your way into the smaller areas as you go. And this way you won't get frustrated, especially if sometimes when I'm painting the smaller details, I notice that I get, uh, my brain kind of shuts off. I, I kind of go on autopilot, especially if I'm doing things like rivets or um, studs or I'm painting very, very small but precise details so that I'll finish maybe like the leg armor, all the rivets on the leg armor have, having uh, squinted my eyes and been very careful and precise with the brush and finally I think oh they look great all the rivets perfectly painted from every angle it looks good and then I look at the rest of the model and there's like 80% more of the model to go and I'm just thinking like wah, wah. if you paint those bigger areas like the ball and chain the staff the uh, the vents on the piping his his face mask all the gold areas on the front not only do you get rid of a large amount of the work you have to do later, but when you're painting those small details like the rivets and um, the the bracer, his gauntlet um, strap or or the shoulder pads there, you can really say to yourself, oh, it's okay because look how awesome this model is going to look. Let there be light. All right, I mean... 
already, if I was working on the on the rivets, on the leg armor, and I had to look at the model and, and see all of the gold that still needed to be done, then I would think, oh boy, there's there's still so much to do. But if you're if you've got that those larger areas going, then it's it's a big help. Right, painting the I don't know what happened there. The the half of the weapon got a large amount of Menoth highlight color on it. You know it's weird when I paint these now or when I film these tutorials, I'm filming them usually at night, at the end of the day, um, especially if I have a busy day with the lady boss running errands and, and doing personal things. Um, usually like 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning is when I'm painting and sometimes it's not the best time to be trying to do these small details and, and have an operational grasp of <laughs> your motor functions. So, um, that, you know, that's just how it is. That's life. All right, now we're working on the, the back vents. I love how the little toppers of his pipe contraption there kind of look like an organ, like a pipe organ for church. Praise Minoth. That's a character I don't have. I don't have a, a, Southern, a Southern Baptist character to hang out with, with Igor and Lewis and the gang. All right, look at that, that looks so cool. And I still have, I'm dreading all of the little rivets on his shoulder shoulder pads and on on his leg armor. But just looking at that armor, uh, that all the all the, the rich gold already on the armor is uh, heartening. It's very inspiring. Do the things that you can look at while you're working on the smaller details and, and be proud of. I think that's the that's the best advice I can give. All right, so I am dotting these rivets on. The camera is very blurry because the light is at a bad angle. It's trying to focus and can't figure it out. And uh, so I'm trying to move my, keep it keep it in shot, keep it in focus. You're, you'll notice that I'm going at an angle. I'm trying to go at the angle that I think the viewer would look at the model. So instead of painting it straight on, like holding the model forward and painting it straight on, I'm kind of going from the upper, Diagonal so that if a, a person picks up the model and he looks down and he sees it the um, The angles should be right when he's looking at the at the paint the gold will have been painted on the upper Upper side of each rivet Now if someone were to pick it up and hold it from underneath um, It might get a different effect. He, he might not see all of the gold coverage there, uh, The gold might not have covered all of that lower area but uh, right now as a preliminary step I'm just trying to get these get it looking good from the top and then in between video clips I'm going to go back and and hit the underside just just in case you can never be certain some people are weird man some people want to look at your models and pick them up and uh when and when they look at it they want to pick out the weirdest things like this one guy picked up a night goblin because I had kit bashed a bunch of dwarven bits onto it and he was like, oh, that's a pretty good paint job, man. But you missed the underside of his robes. And I was like, how do you even see that? You have to pick up this tiny little night goblin and look at it from basically its feet looking up in order to see that I had missed priming his underside of his robes. Whatever. Okay, so now I'm taking the paint. I bet that's the guy that keeps disliking my videos. We have one serial disliker. All this time I thought it was my crazy ex-girlfriend, but maybe it was that guy. Okay, so I'm painting on the rivets now, on the leg armor. This is something you don't have to do. You can just, if you want to just dry brush the lighter pink purple color onto the edges of the leg armor, you can do that and it'll be fine, especially if you're afraid, like if you have, you know, shaky hands or or your eyes can't focus on, on the rivets that well because they are very tiny and they're very precisely, precisely spaced. But if you do want to go the extra mile, I'm, I'm going to give you this tip on how to do it. Paint as if you are um, using a, a pen or scratching instead of using a, a paintbrush. You just want the, the brush to kind of glance and graze each dot. And it almost, it's almost like a, a dry brush. You, so you don't want to press it too hard and firmly onto the model. You don't want that gold paint to go everywhere. But at the same time, you can catch more than one rivet and uh, it'll look pretty good, I think. 
All right, at this point, I'm going to jump to the last clip of the video, and we're going to basically just be cleaning up the final details and adding in some eyeballs. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fix up the Menoff insignia on his shoulder, shoulder pads. He can't go into battle with janky looking shoulder pads. Uh, nobody's going to respect him. I'm going to send him back to exemplar school. So we're starting off with a bad bomb black. And all we're doing is basically repainting the symbol. Because if you're like me, when you were painting on all that Menoth white highlight earlier, it probably um, fudged a little bit onto the symbol itself. After all the washes and um, dry brushing, There might it might not look as black as it used to. So we're just going back over with Abaddon black. And we don't even have to wait for it to dry because this is such a it's such a small area. You shouldn't be putting that much paint. If you're putting on too much paint, it's going to bleed into the white area and, and ruin the insignia. So basically, we're going to keep moving. We're going to keep going. And this is very much a like lightning fast, wet blending kind of style and technique. So now I'm just moving on to the Dark Reaper. And instead of painting the entire insignia, I'm painting very specific places. So the cross in the center, the upper areas where it has that little um, circular symbol, and the um, outside, uh, let's call it his hands, the insignia's hands that look like two little crab hands. The reason why we do this is so that we do leave some areas where the black is prevalent and it doesn't look like we're painting our model in dark blue gray. The final thing we're painting on is this rust gray and uh, Jeez, again, I apologize for uh, for the focus there. I'm trying to get him, keep him in focus, and sometimes it's just a little bit too tough. So, so for that one, I'm I'm really lining as uh, as carefully as I can. And if you find yourself painting the highlight a little too thickly, like I did, very simple. Just go back with known oil. This also is going to help you if you put too much, or if you accidentally painted the white menoth color onto some of the black areas, it will uh, easily help you to recreate that sense of shadow, tie in the colors, tie that Abaddon black to the gray, and um, give you a very nice finish. So the final step we are going to take is to give this guy some eyeballs so he can see. And actually what, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm cleaning up. I got a little bit of Abaddon black onto the white shoulder pad. So if you do that, just Go back over with Menoth White Highlight. Uh, make sure you thin down your paints. It's very easy at this step of this uh, of the of the process to um, decide. Oh, you know what? It's I'm I'm nearing the end, so I'm just gonna go straight from the pot. Not worry about thinning the paint and just cover the mistake. And then, unfortunately, that's where a lot of mistakes happen, where a lot of the brush strokes become evident. There's too much paint on the brush, and it goes on a little bit too thickly. So we want to make sure we don't do that. And finally, the last step we're going to do is paint in some eyeballs. So I'm only going to use one color, Troll Slayer Orange, because it actually has a very nice effect. It almost looks like an optical illusion when you paint it on and use that as the eyeballs because uh, in this case, the shading of the mask or, or the around where the eyes are is that Seraphim Sepia Brown color. So when you paint Troll Slayer Orange, onto the eyeballs, it actually has this weird optical illusion effect of <laughs> creating uh, highlighted and shaded eyes. So you don't have to go any higher than that. You see it looks like really, really cool, like it's just popping out. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more.